In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. You are listening to Daily Bread Devotions with Father Eustace Yame, a Salesian of Don Bosco. Your word, Lord, is a lamp for my steps. Stay tuned. It is Saturday, the 20th of July, 2024, 15th week in Ordinary Time, and participating in the proclamation of the Word of God for today are the following Daily Bread members. Pasco Kunda from Kitwe, Zambia, celebrating his birthday today, takes for us the first reading. Petronella Mabonzo, celebrating her birthday today from Harare, Zimbabwe, takes for us the responsorial psalm. And proclaiming the gospel is Father Joseph Kapalasa, celebrating his priestly anniversary today, working in the diocese in Malawi. Let us pray. Grant, Lord God, that we, your servants, may rejoice in unfailing health of mind and body, and through the glorious intercession of Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, may we be set free from present sorrow and come to enjoy eternal happiness. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. First reading. They covet fields and take away houses. A reading from the book of the prophet Micah. Micah chapter 2, verse 1 to 5. What to those who devise wickedness and work evil upon their beds. When the maiming dawns, they perform it, because it is in the power of their hand. They covet fields and seize them, and houses and take them away. They oppress a man and his house, a man and his inheritance. Therefore, thus says the Lord, Behold, against this family I am devising evil, from which you cannot remove your necks, and you shall not walk hotly, for it will be an evil time. That day they shall take up a torn song against you, and they will with a bitter lamentation, and say, We are hotly ruined. He changed the portion of my people. How he removes it from me. Among our capitals he divides our fields. Therefore, you will have none to cast the line by lot in the assembly of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm, Psalms 10, verse 1 to 2, 3 to 4a, 7 to 8b, 14, and the response is taken from Psalms 10, verse 12b. And the response is, Do not forget the poor, O Lord. Do, Do not, not forget the poor, the poor, O Lord. O Lord. Why do you stand afar off and hide yourself in times of distress? The poor are devoured by the pride of the wicked. They are caught in the schemes that others have made. Do, do not, not forget, forget the poor, poor, O Lord. For the wicked boasts of his soul's desires. The covetous, blasphemous, and spurns the Lord. The wicked says in his pride, God will not punish. There is no God. Such are his thoughts. Do, do not, not forget, forget the poor, poor O Lord. Lord. His mouth is full of cursing, guile, oppression. Under his tongue are deceit and evil. He sits in ambush in the villages, in hidden places. He murders the innocent. Do, Do not, not forget, forget the poor, poor Lord. O Lord. But you have seen the trouble and sorrow. You note it. You take it in your hands. The helpless one relies on you, for you are the helper of the orphan. Do, Do not, not forget, forget the poor, poor Lord. O Lord. Those poor acclamation. Taken from Second Corinthians 5, verse 19. Alleluia, alleluia. God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Matthew chapter 12. Verses 14 up to 21. At that time, the Pharisees went out and took counsel against Jesus 
how to destroy him. Jesus, aware of this, withdrew from there, and many followed him, and healed them all, and ordered them not to make him known. This was to fulfill what was spoken by the prophet Isaiah. Behold, my servant, whom I have chosen, my beloved, with whom my soul is well pleased, I will put my spirit upon him, and he shall proclaim justice to the Gentiles. He will not wrangle or cry aloud, nor will anyone hear his voice in the streets. He will not break a bruised reed or quench a smoldering wick, till he brings justice to victory, and in his name will the Gentiles hope. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We have been dealing with prophets who were contemporaries. We dealt with Amos, we came to Hosea, then Isaiah. Now we are with prophet Micah and we are only dealing with Micah today because Monday is a feast, so we have special readings. That is the feast of Mary Magdalene. And then, and then from there we go to Jeremiah who is in another period altogether. We want to say something about the background of Prophet Micah. He came from the small town of Moresha, the southwest of Jerusalem, and his message is intended primarily for the southern kingdom of Judah, though he also makes reference to the northern kingdom of Israel. Remember that the nation had split into two kingdoms after the death of Solomon around 920 BC, where we had the northern kingdom with Samaria as the capital and the southern kingdom with Jerusalem as the capital. Now, in his first oracle that is found in chapter 1, verse 2 to 7, Micah predicts the fall of the northern kingdom. That would date the beginning of his prophetic ministry before 721 BC when Samaria fell to the Assyrians. From that time on, only the southern kingdom of Judah remained until it was destroyed by the Babylonians in 586-87 BC. Now, Micah expected that Judah would follow the fate of Israel and predicted that Jerusalem, the holy city that God had chosen for the temple, would be wiped off the face of the earth. For those holding to the assurance that God would never break promises to protect king and temple, these words would have been a great shock. Probably thought to demonstrate a lack of faith on Micah's part. Micah spoke harshly to prophets, seers, and priests who told people what they wanted to hear. The reassuring words of God's promises and not the reality that Judah's fate could soon follow that of Israel. You know, this prophet never spared anyone. We see this in the first reading of today where he says, Woe to those who devise wickedness and work evil upon their beds. When the miming dawns, they perform it because it is in the power of their hand. They covet fields and seize them. These are the corrupt of our society. He is referring to all the politicians. He is referring to all those who are too selfish. Instead of thinking about the needs of the people, they are thinking about how to fatten their own pockets. They don't have even temperance. People are suffering. They don't have the essentials of life and you have enough. You are not satisfied with that enough. You want to get more. Micah is coming for you. Micah is saying what to you. That will not take you anywhere. You will be in the grave one day and all those riches will never follow you. He is preaching justice. He is preaching social justice just like Amos. And he wants a society that is just. He wants a society that transforms religion into spirituality. Because there is a difference between religion and spirituality. You may be religious, but you're not spiritual. 
You are not spiritual because your religiosity does not affect your heart. Where you go on with your own life, you seem not to care about who is getting affected with the way you do things, with the way you lead your life. May Micah speak to your heart. Jesus is threatened in the gospel passage of today. And he doesn't want to end his life. No, he's very careful. He knows he has a lot to do. He's not a coward. He withdraws. Withdrawal from a dangerous situation does not imply cowardice. No, you need to move away from toxic people. You need to move away from those who are not helping you to progress. Withdrawing is a sign of wisdom, not cowardice. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed Saturday to you. Thanks be to God. <laughs> <laughs>